listen, we're in week seven of this series that we've been calling I Declare War. And so we've only got one more week left. Don't die out on us. We're going to end this thing strong. How have you been feeling during this series? Hope you've been blessed. Um, But I want to talk about some things that anger me for a second, and I don't know if you can agree with this, but um, anybody just get angry when you're walking behind somebody and it seems like they have nowhere to go? (laughs) Or maybe you're walking behind, or or maybe you're driving behind someone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know those people who turn slow? There's nobody there. What? what? There's space and opportunity. (laughs) Accelerate in Jesus' name. <laughs> you ever, uh, you, or, or what about like uh, when you go to Walmart, right, and you sift through all the carts because you try, you want to make sure you get a good one. And then you get the one, you're like, all right, this one's good. And the moment you get to the produce section, <laughs> it starts to do what it does. You're like, man, I should have went to Target. <laughs> then you see the prices at Target. I'm going back to Walmart. <laughs> Some things just make you upset. Some things just make you mad. I don't know if you've ever been on, 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 a, on, on a, a detective journey on social media. And, and you're on somebody's profile and you're scrolling down and you've made it all the way to 2013. And it's 2023. And you accidentally like a post. <laughs> Doesn't that just make you mad? Ah, oh, man, what am I? Unlike, now, ah, now you see, now you don't. <laughs> or what about where you're, you're in a serious business meeting or, or, or maybe you, you're, you're at an interview and, and the group chat just wants to get popping today. <laughs> and so now, eh, eh, every, every, every eh, eh, now you're upset. Why, why would you guys get popping today? I was sitting at home all day and no one had anything to say. Phone dry. Some reason, the moment I have something serious to do, everybody wants to talk. But there's some things that just really frustrate us in life, things that just really get you mad. But have you ever done or said anything because you were so angry that you look back and say, man, I wish I would have never done that. I wish I would have never said that. Today I want to talk about one of the most destructive forces in our uh, lives today. I want to talk about a destructive force called anger. And if you're married in the room, if you're single in the room, or you're just annoyed in the room, I want to talk about anger because here's what I know about anger. If you don't figure out how to solve the anger problem in your life, you will destroy every relationship in your life. Anger is is one of those emotions that, that we have a hard time understanding how to manage. A few years ago, um, Jenny and I were trying to sell our first home, and we we ended up selling the home, and I remember we were kind of packing up some some last things, and we were cleaning up in the kitchen, and somehow we just started talking about something. You you know how, like, you end up in an argument, you really don't know how you ended up there? It was like one of those those things. But for some reason, it, it really just triggered me. And I remember in that argument, I had gotten so angry that I just started screaming. And have you ever been so angry that you could hardly breathe? I don't know if you've ever been that angry. And I remember, like, screaming. I'm yelling at her. I'm, I'm, I'm like, ah, la, 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 la. like, I'm really going in. And I remember, I, I like, I slammed my hand on, on, on the uh, kitchen island. Boom. And my, my wedding ring broke in half. And, and I remember the look on, on Jenny's face. I'm not, I'm not laughing. It's not funny. Um, but it was in that moment that I knew. I was like, I don't think I'm going to get another one. I think that one's going, and I think that's pretty much it here. And, and, but, but I remember being so angry in that, in that argument. Some time passed, and... We were, we were able to kind of talk about it, and it took us years to truly unpack and to deal with what happened in that moment of anger. 
And if you're honest today, you are dealing with some things in your life as a result of some angry moments. You're dealing with some things in your life and you're, you're hoarding, you're, you're harboring, and you are, you're really trying to manage your anger because you have been hurt, you've been offended, you've been frustrated, you've been all the things. And I want to talk about what the Bible has to say about how we steward our anger. And I'm going to give you a basic definition of anger. What is it? Let's start with the American Psychological Association's definition of anger. Defines anger as an emotion characterized by antagonism towards someone or something you feel has deliberately done you, everyone say wrong. Wrong. So there's... There's a, a moral component to anger. You feel that someone has done you, what's that word? Wrong. And so if you want to understand anger, you have to understand this basic premise that anger doesn't even happen unless you perceive that someone has done you what? Wrong. I mean, anger doesn't really come about if, if, if you don't feel like anyone or anything has done you wrong. The moment anger shows up, it is because you feel that someone has done you wrong. What I want to tell you is that anger in and of itself is a God-given emotion. I'm not here to demonize anger. But although anger is a God-given emotion, there are aspects of anger that can not be God-honoring. And so I'm going to give you two types of anger. There's human anger, and then there's righteous anger, or what they call righteous indignation or passion. There's sinful anger, and there is godly anger. There is an anger that comes from God. And I know that might be difficult to hear, like, what, God makes me angry? No, he doesn't make you angry. But there are things that should anger you because it's wrong. You, you should be angry about the things that are wrong. You should be angry about injustices in our world today. Those things should cause you to be angry. And in the New Testament, there are two Greek words that are translated as anger. There's one that means passion and energy. And, and that's the thing that happens when you see an injustice. There's a passion that rises up in you. There's an indignation that rises up in you that says that should not be. That, that, that's a God-given emotion. But there's another Greek word in the New Testament that means agitated or boiling. This is human anger that gets agitated. Anyone's temperature, just your blood just starts to boil. And so we have to make a distinction between human anger and righteous anger. Let me give you three things about human anger that you need to know. Here's the first thing. Human anger does this. It prioritizes being right over being righteous. It prioritizes being right over being righteous. And I want to look at James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Why? Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When you are angry, if you are angry from a humanistic perspective, what that means is you are tempted, you are susceptible to prioritizing being right over being righteous. Why? Because the emotion came because you, you think that someone did you wrong. And so the temptation with human anger is to prioritize being right over being righteous. Human anger does not produce the kind of righteousness that God desires. What kind of righteousness does human anger produce? Rightness. It, it, it desires to be right and to prove its rightness. And so why, why are we talking about this in the context of spiritual warfare? The reason that we're talking about this is because the enemy wants to use your human anger to destroy every relationship in your life that is God-giving and healthy. He, he wants to use your anger to completely erode every chance of a healthy marriage that you have. He wants to use your human anger to erode your family. He wants to keep you driving a wedge between you and your father or you and your mother or you and your kids. 
You are fighting on the enemy's turf. He loves that. And, and, and we, sometimes we get joy out of getting the upper hand over someone when we're angry. Look what James 3 says. It says, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes the tongue praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And you will not have victory in your life if you're allowing human anger to get control of your tongue. And in this passage, he's, we don't have any indication that James is talking about someone who's angry. We're just talking about the common struggle that it is to control a tongue. Whether you're angry or not, it's hard to control your tongue. Now imagine anger getting a grip over your emotion and human anger now getting control over your life. Imagine how it distorts the power of the tongue. Human anger does not produce the kind of righteousness that God desires. It prioritizes being right over being righteous, and it pursues revenge rather than resolution. And here's the third thing that human anger does. It prolongs healing because it harbors resentment. You see, righteous anger comes, it seeks resolution, and then it leaves. But human anger, it comes, it seeks revenge, and it lingers. It doesn't want to let go. I don't want to let go. I don't want to get, I've been in arguments and, and as early as last week. Uh, and I say argument, we had, I, it was a disagreement. I did, uh, I, we were talking about something, I'm talking about Jenny and I, we're talking about something, and I got upset. And she realized the situation that we were talking about, and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, babe, and she apologized. But I still was upset, because. And she's like, I'm sorry, babe, I really am. You're right. Like, uh, and I'm like, because <laughs> you know how, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not ready to not be angry yet. <laughs> I got to sit in it for a second <laughs> because it feels better to hold on to power, Right? Right, that anger in that moment, when she realized she was wrong, what happened? I felt like I had power. So I wanted to hold on to that anger because I liked the feeling of having power at that moment. So righteous anger comes, it seeks resolution, and it leaves. But human anger, it comes, it seeks revenge, and it lingers. It, it holds on. But look at what Colossians 3 and 8 says. It says, but now is the time to get rid of anger. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, now is the time to get rid of anger. It says, now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Now is the time. If you're here today, I believe God sent you here for a reason. And I believe he wanted me to tell you that now is the time to get rid of anger. Now. Now's the time. You have to diffuse this bomb. You cannot allow anger to take a hold of your life because it prolongs your healing and it does nothing to enhance or, or edify the relationship. Now, many of us think, okay, well, how do I get rid of anger? Many of us think the way to get rid of human anger is to not be angry. Well, if I'm just not angry, then I'll have nothing to get rid of. And that's not the solution because anger is a God-given emotion. There are some things that should make you upset. And so you can't refuse to be angry. Here's what I want you to write down. Being angry is a part of human nature, but responding in anger is a matter of the will. I'll say it again. Being angry is a part of the human experience. It's, it's a part of human nature. But responding in anger is a matter of your decision. It is a matter of the will. And this is why Ephesians 4 and 26 teaches us, it says, and don't, be ang don't, be, don't sin by letting anger control you. It says, don't let the sun go down while you are still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. 
And here we are talking about spiritual warfare. You praying, you rebuking the devil, you speaking in tongues, you going to everyone that got Halloween decorations going, I bind you in Jesus' name. Ah, I see that witch. Bind, ah. You rebuking everybody and you holding on to anger. And the devil comes and knock on your door and there's an entryway it's the size of your foot. And the devil's like, oh, I just want to make sure I can still see in there. Looks like I can. <laughs> Why? Because, because when you're controlled by anger, it gives a foothold to the devil. But why do we hold on to anger? Well, because we don't want to be a doormat. So our solution to being a doormat is to be a footholder. We, we want to hold the door open for the enemy. I don't want to be a doormat and allow people to walk all over me, so we say. So what I'll do is I'll sit here and I'll hold the door open for the devil. So that he can have access to my life, to my marriage, to my family, to every relationship that God intends to make me holy. Being angry is a part of human nature, but responding in anger is a matter of the will. It says, don't let your anger, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, and I, you grew up and we all thought, like, hey, don't go to bed upset. If you're married, talk it out before you go to sleep. How many of y'all, how's that going for y'all? <laughs> Is anybody going to be honest and tell me that you do that 100% of the time? No. Because what the Bible is doing right now is using metaphorical language. It doesn't literally mean don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. It's, it's a metaphor. It's like if I tell you, hey, hey, go break a leg. Are you going to go break your leg on the platform? No, no, no. Hey, I'm telling you, hey, go do a good job. And so anybody know the Bible uses metaphorical language? Yeah, so the Bible is using metaphorical language to say, hey, don't let anger go unprocessed. That's what that means. Don't let the sun go down on your anger means don't let there be anger that has not been uncovered in your life. Don't let the sun go down on that anger. Hey, don't let that anger go unchecked. If you've got anger in your life, you need to know what it is, why it is, and who did it. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Now, it's not a healthy practice to go to bed mad. So there's nothing wrong with, with having that philosophy. Hey, let's not go to bed upset with one another. That that's, that's a healthy principle. But it's not a literal it's not supposed to be taken literally. Hey, don't let the sun go down. Why, well, well, what time does the sun go down? Does that mean when, I hit my, when my head hits the pillow? It looks like it goes down at 6.56 today. Hey, we got to have this conversation at 6.15. It's not supposed to be taken literally. Y'all here today? All right, here's, here's what I want to tell you. Here's the next thing. Diffusing anger is a, an essential part of spiritual warfare. Diffusing anger is an essential part of spiritual warfare. I know in spiritual warfare we think it's all about the devil or all about the world or all about these things, but sometimes it's about you. And it's about dealing with you. When we talked about overcoming the flesh and then we talked about that, but I want to I tell you that diffusing your human anger is a part of spiritual warfare. Why can't you diffuse your anger? Because the enemy doesn't want you to let it go. That's why it's hard. The enemy wants to use your human anger to destroy you and your relationships. So we don't, we don't make it a habit of diffusing our angers. Here's what we do. Here's what we actually do. We do one of two things. We either store our anger, which means we suppress it, or we ignore it. Where are my suppressors? Don't, you don't got to raise your hand. I, I'm a suppressor. I'm a suppressor. I tend to ignore the things that upset me. And so I can go weeks and years without any type of extreme rage. But then something will happen, and it will set me off. And, it, it, and then I just go crazy. 
And, and for years, for the first few years of our, our marriage, I thought that I was the one who had, I told you all this before, but I thought I was the one that had a handle on my emotions. I thought she was the one that was, had the emotional problem. But I, I, what I quickly learned was, no, no, what she had was a healthy relationship with her emotions. She would feel an emotion. She would express that emotion. She would process that emotion. She would do whatever that emotion requires, and then she would move on from that. But me, I, I, would, I would be impacted. I would be affected. I would be hurt. I, I would be wounded, and what would I would do? I would suppress it. I would ignore it. I would act like it didn't matter. I would act like it didn't exist. And then there would be the right conversation, and I would go crazy. So we store it. Here's the second thing that we do. We mismanage anger. This is where we bleed on people who didn't cut us. You're mad about your, your coworker, and you come home and you dump on your wife. You're mad about your neighbor, and you come home and you dump on your husband. You're mad about something that happened to you when you were seven, and you just... You're just snappy with everybody that reminds you of the thing. And so you are mismanaging your anger and you are misdirecting the anger because you have not processed, you have not revealed. And here are the two things that I want to tell you about storing and mismanaging anger. When you, mis when you store anger, it, it is suppressed anger will always lead to an eruption. It will always lead to an eruption. But, but when you mismanage anger, mismanaged anger will always lead you to dysfunction. It will be chaos in your household. And the people in your household aren't even the ones who cut you. But they're the ones that got to clean up the blood. Human anger prioritizes being right over being righteous. It pursues revenge rather than resolution. It prolongs healing because it harbors resentment. Now, it's at this point that I know everybody's like, can we talk about how to solve this? <laughs> let's, let's talk about how we solve our anger. But let's talk about how we detect and discover this anger. How is this anger caused? Anger is caused by four reasons. Here's the first one, disappointment. Disappointment. This is caused by an unmet expectation. I had an expectation, and that expectation was, was not met. And now I'm angry. Here's the second thing, frustration. Human anger can be caused by frustration. There are some things that frustrate you, but, but you know what really frustrates you? Repeated unmet expectations. So disappointment is an unmet expectation. But if that unmet expectation just keeps happening and happening, at this point now I'm just getting frustrated. Here's the third thing, physical pain. If I punch you in the face, you're going to get angry. Physical pain causes anger. And then here's the fourth thing. Emotional wounds. Emotional wounds. Disappointment, frustration, physical pain, and emotional wounds, these are things that cause us to be angry. So how do we diffuse our anger? We do three things. We have to reveal its source. We have to reveal its source. Are you angry because you are disappointed? Are you angry because you're frustrated? Are you angry because something has impacted your physical body? Are you angry because of an emotional wound? You've got to reveal the source of the anger. This is the only way for you to get to a place of diffusing anger. You have to reveal its source. If you don't know the source of why you are angry, of why you are upset, you're not going to get victory over anger. And you, that foothold that you have open for the enemy, you're never going to let that go. He's always going to have access to your life. 
And there are going to be patterns and arguments. You ever, you ever find yourself in the same argument just in different forms? This thing, just, it, just, it just grinds my gears. I'm just upset about this thing. It's probably because you have not truly revealed the source of that anger. So here's the second thing in diffusing anger. After you reveal its source, you've got to release the energy. Anger comes with an energy that you feel physiolog physiologically. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That, that anger in your body has, has an energy in your body that you have to release. So you've got to reveal the source of the anger. But once you know the source, that energy in your body is still there. You've got to get rid of that energy. You might need to go on a jog. You might need to scream in a pillow. You, you might need to, to do something that engages uh, uh, your mind in a different way. You've got to get rid of that negative energy that's in your body. And now don't, don't hear me as if, oh, man, is this a universalistic church? I didn't talk about energy in here. I'm talking about emotional energy. I'm talking about the energy that's in your body that, that is caused by being angry. Because if you respond with that energy in your body, your tone is going to prove that you're still mad. You're going to hear it in your tone. You're going to hear it in the word choice. And sometimes you can hear it louder in your silence. Reveal its source. You've got to release the energy. And then here's what we do after we, we've done that. Now it's time for us to respond with grace. Respond with grace. Ah, grace. Don't you just love it? <laughs> we love grace only if it's applied to us. We have a hard time with grace when it involves others. God, thank you for your grace. <laughs> That you have poured out through your son Christ Jesus. You have poured out your grace into my life. I'm so grateful. All my life you have been faithful. We will sing about God's grace and goodness until the cats come home. But let somebody else need grace. Let the person who did you wrong need grace. Ha. Ha. Can't give them too much grace. I don't want to enable them. <laughs> I hear you. And you get real philosophical and with it, the, yeah, but if we do too much, we have to, we are starting to enable negative behaviors. <laughs> we can't enable negative behaviors. I'm not telling you to enable negative behaviors. I'm telling you to close that door that you've left open for the enemy. That, that's what I'm to, this ain't got nothing to do with other people. This has everything to do with you diffusing anger that the enemy wants to use to destroy your life. You got to respond in grace. Look at what Romans 12 and 21 says. I know this is overly simplistic, but it's true. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing what? Good. Don't let evil conquer you. We conquer evil by doing good. How is a thief know that he's no longer a thief? Well, when he starts to do the opposite. When, when, he, when he begins to, do, to demonstrate that he's no longer interested in taking, but he's only interested in giving. We don't overcome evil by calling out evil. You are aware of evil by calling out evil, but you overcome evil by doing good. So how do we respond with grace? Because that's what you're really waiting for. The Greek word for grace, it means kindness. It means extended favor. But you know what the literal translation from the Greek is? It, it is when I leverage my power in a way that demonstrates kindness. Remember when I told you how 
human anger makes you feel powerful. And so when I talk about responding with grace, that power that you feel, you've got to leverage that power and submit that power to a greater authority so that you can demonstrate his kindness. That, that, that's literally what, what grace is. It, it assumes that someone of a greater power is extending a favor or a kindness to someone of a lesser power. And so when I respond with grace, what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, 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 I'm going to let go of this power that the enemy wants to corrupt my life with, and I'm going to demonstrate the kindness of God. You can only do that with the help of Jesus. Ephesians 4, 31 says this. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, do what? Be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. The alternative to bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, and evil behavior is to be kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving. That this is this is really practical. This is not, you got to come up and, and we lay hands on you and we pray and we, we shuck and we dive and we, we pray that the spirit has left you. And I do believe in spiritual manifestations and things of that nature. But what I'm talking about is how we get rid of that anger, that, that human anger that, that you're trying to hold on to because it makes you feel powerful. You've got to reveal its source, release the energy, respond with grace by being kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving. And next week, we're going to talk about forgiveness. And I hope you will be here. Because I really believe that this is a part one of a two-part conversation. I want you to do something bold. I want you to just raise your hand in the air if you know that you, you struggle with anger. If you know that there's some things in your life, in your past that, yeah, I've got anger. I've got to let that anger go. I, sometimes church is difficult for me as a pastor Because although pastors don't admit it, there is a pressure to perform. And my prayer is always, 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 God, help me to steward this platform so that I'm not performing, but that you are speaking. And I know coming into this, I struggle because I'm like, they're not going to shout off this message, God. Can we do something that's a little more like, you know, that gets us going? And he's like, nah. There, there's some people there that need to let go of anger. There's some people there that think they're free from the enemy's grip. But as long as they're holding on to that anger, he's always got a foothold. 